Machine learning and artificial intelligence are two topics usually only understood by computer nerds, but now it's available to you and me for free with no coding experience in the form of text to image original art. Yes, you heard that right. Anything you can imagine, anything that comes to mind that you can tell the computer, it can generate for you in art. And today, that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you. How do you use stable diffusion and open source artificial intelligence? But before we get started, we have to give credit where credit is due. There are a lot of people out there working tirelessly to make this software available to everyone for free open source so that simple people like you and me can use this stuff for free. Big shout out to Stable Diffusion. Here's the link to their Discord down below. Please go check them out. They're a great community. There are several AI available right now for text to image generation, but many of them require expensive video cards, programming language, or fees to get started. Today we will use Stable Diffusion run through Google Collab created by Knopp and Wass. Shout out to those guys, thank you so much for making this resource. Today we will use Stable Diffusion run through a Google Collab created by Knopp and Wass to go ahead and do that text to image artificial intelligence original art. And if you wouldn't mind poking the thumb down below, that'll keep the robots happy so they keep making original art for us for free. All right, first off, you need a Google account. I'm pretty sure you already have one. If you don't, go ahead and set that up. Run over to Google Collab. There's a link down here at the bottom of the video. It's also in the description down below. Go ahead and click on that link to the collab to Knopp and Waz's hard earned stable diffusion. Go ahead and read through the terms of use on your own right here. If you've never used Google Collab or Jupyter Notebook before, it's pretty simple. Code has been generated down below here in this cell. And at the beginning of the text, you're gonna find there's lots of information that you can go ahead and read through. Most of it probably won't make sense to you if this is the first time using it. If you've never used Google Collab or Jupyter Notebook, essentially down below, we have a whole bunch of different prompts that we can enter in. If you double click into it, you'll see that there is behind the scenes, there's code running all of the prompts and everything. Uh, if you get confused, just double click. That's gonna bring you back to the prompt don't get scared if you double click by accident, it brings you to the code. So going down here to the first cell, we have render images by prompt. And this is what we're going to do for our first example. It already has some text in here. If you don't know what you're looking for, it kind of shows you an example of what you can do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do our own though, so we can uh, create our own art. We're not gonna go with the default prompts and everything that they list in here for examples. We're gonna remove all this stuff. So now what we have is we have render images, we have prompt, and in our prompt, we're going to go ahead and write our own. So we need to tell the AI what we're looking for, right? So in this case, let's say we want to uh, create a beautiful fairy, right? So we have to be very specific of what we want though. So we're gonna say a fantasy comic book style portrait, portrait, painting of a beautiful Chinese fairy. So you see, I have a lot of information in there so that you know it can follow along. It already knows what Unreal Engine 5 is, hyper-realistic. So we have a lot of information for our AI to go ahead and make this image out of nothing, right? So that is our prompt. Uh, we scroll down. We're not messing with image to image yet or in paint setup. So all we have is our prompt. We have um, the information for our prompt for our AI to follow. And then down below under our setup, we're gonna keep most of this stuff default. So I wouldn't mess with too much of that stuff, but it does seem that when I take a scale down to 7.5, I do get pretty good images. So I'm gonna take the scale down to 7.5. The width and the height here tells you the image is gonna be 512 by 512 resolution. The higher you go on the resolution, the more resources it costs Google Collab. So just keep that in mind. If you do want like a portrait, then you probably want 256 by 512, but 512 by 512 is gonna give us that nice, uh, kind of, I guess, square image. So we'll go down. We're gonna leave all this other stuff as general. It tells us that it's going to save these pictures in a folder called All Pics in our Google Drive, right? So you have to be okay with that. We're gonna approve that when we go ahead and, and run this. And uh, down below here, it has more information about our upscaler. Uh, don't worry too much about this stuff until later on. Uh, here we have an enable not safe for work filter, right? So the filter is currently disabled, so you could actually, there could be adult images. Just keep that in mind. If you do want to filter those out, go ahead and click the button there. And uh, at the bottom, there's more information. We don't need to worry about it. So essentially all we needed was our prompt and then what our prompt actually was here. And we removed the, the image to image and the end paint setups. Now we're gonna click this play button. It's gonna first say, hey, 
uh, you have to prove that this guy who made the notebook, you're okay with sharing uh, this data stored with Google, so we're gonna run it anyway, right? And then it says it requires high amount of RAM, we're gonna say, okay, that's fine. And it goes ahead and starts connecting and initializing. And so now it's connected. And over here, you'll see that it starts spinning around. Uh, so you're just, you're gonna wait now for it to do its thing. It might take a little while to go ahead and set up this image that uh, from our prompt. Uh, so we have to allow it a few minutes maybe to go ahead and create these. So we'll come back in just a moment. Oh, we have to permit the notebook to access our Google Drives, uh, connect to Google Drive. We have to go ahead and allow that and select your Google account. And then you're gonna have to go ahead and approve that it makes that folder and it allows those images to be saved in your Google Drive. So we'll allow that. All right, so our prompt went ahead and it's complete now. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see our first image and it just blows my mind every time I see these. This is just, it's incredible. Look at this, this fairy, uh, this from our prompt that, that it generated. Just beautiful artwork. Look at the details and we, it upscales the image for you as well. So it recognizes it's a face, it upscales the image and it tries to clean up the image a little bit. Just incredible details. I mean, a little bit of uh, marks on the face. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be hair or what, what that's supposed to be. Uh, I think it has a flower here, a little flower theme. Here's the next image it creates. Also stunning, uh, amazing, uh, very beautiful image here. Um, Looks like she's wearing a gold outfit. Uh, her face comes in pretty clear. I think those are wings in the back. Uh, so pretty incredible. And then here's the last one. And the last one, it looks like it, it wants to, it to be a painting and almost like here's the author down here at the bottom right, or I'm not sure what that is, but look at the eye detail. It's just incredible with the hair. just really stunning to look at. And uh, so just, I mean, this is original artwork. Amazing what, what it was able to come up with, right? So, that's just a one example. I mean, anything that you can imagine, you can go ahead and make, you know, generate art like this and it's, it's all original. Uh, so next we're gonna do another experiment, this time using the image to image feature. So let me show you how uh, that will run. Uh, so we're gonna scroll back up. We are gonna go ahead and remove that, uh, this from prompt to image to image. And now we need to specify what, uh, basically what we would like for our image to image. And I'll explain a little about that process. So here uh, it asks us what image are we going to use? Let's just go over here. Let's pull up a picture of uh, Mario. And let's go to images, select Mario. And let's use this one where he's kind of running. So we'll go ahead and click the image, right click, copy image address, go back over and paste it into our image here. So it is a hosted image on line and then for our prompt we have to come up with something um let's let's use uh maybe link from zelda running through like a galaxy uh kind of like how mario was running we're gonna try to use the image of link from zelda uh running instead so let's come up with the text for that so we're gonna start it off with link from legend of zelda and then uh, we want him to be running through like a galaxy of stars. So let me show you a little tip for that. So if we go to lexica.art, and then uh, this is a AI generated art hosted platform. So anyone who's uh, already created art using artificial intelligence, their prompts are listed here. So if we want galaxy of stars, we can go ahead and search for that and we can find one that we kind of like. And when we generate our art, it'll be very similar to, uh, to, to this, hopefully, is kind of the idea. So if we scroll down and we find one that we kind of like, uh, I'm looking here, which one do I like the best? Um, I don't know how, how much it will really matter. Um, wow, this one is crazy. Let's go ahead and do this one. So here is this, just looks really, really wild. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and, maybe that's too much though. Let's just do this one. This is like the Milky Way and stuff. So let's copy that prompt. And then we're gonna try to have like Zelda running through that area, right? So I'm gonna come down here, uh, right after this, I'm just gonna paste it in. And we're just gonna say running through through Milky Way pastel colors. Okay, let's see. Let's just see what happens. Who knows, right? 
Um, so image to image, that's selected. Uh, we have our, it starts with our Mario image. That's our input. And then our output is hopefully an image of Zelda, Link from Zelda, right? Running through a galaxy of stars. I, I'm gonna leave everything else pretty much the same. There's a lot of settings in here that I don't really know much about. Feel free to play with them if you're more advanced or if you've done this a few times, go ahead and play with it. I'm gonna leave everything else the same and let's see what we get. So when we're ready, we just are gonna hit this play button and that's going to run all that code once again. And uh, it'll take a few minutes probably to generate more art. So we'll be right back. So it just finished our image to image. Remember we had Mario as our input and we wanted an output of Link from Zelda running through the Milky Way, uh, pastel colors. So let's see how it did. Uh, so if we scroll down, here's Mario, our input. And then here, we, this is kind of cool. So we have Zelda running through. This is, I guess, the, their interpretation of the galaxy. Um, because Mario was running, I think it helps with the action of Zelda kind of running. So that's that's pretty cool. Not sure what he's holding in his hand uh, or what's over here, but pretty cool take on it. So we're going to scroll down. I do like that one. It's pretty cool art. Uh, pretty amazing what it came up with, honestly. And then scroll down further. This one is a little strange. So uh, it looks like the arm is a little, we have two arms here and we have something else over here. I'm not sure what's going on with the leg. So that one looks a little strange, um, but it, I think it tried to, uh, to mimic uh, that input. And if we keep scrolling down, uh, this one is actually very interesting. So you can see how it took on the form of the Mario here, the, the arms, the eyes, the look, right? It's very similar with a foot here. Uh, foot there. So it does take on that input of the image pretty well. So uh, a little strange how many ears we have going on over here, but uh, the shield looks kind of cool and the outfit does look like a Zelda type outfit. outfit. So uh, pretty interesting what it's able to do. And last, we're going to do the in painting feature of this Google Collab, which is another feature in Stable Diffusion. So let me show you that one and then you can just play around with this and let me know what you come up with. So let's remove, let's go up to the top under mode. We're changing to end painting. And here uh, we're removing the prompt and we're gonna have to come up with something here. So we're gonna leave the picture of Mario. Maybe instead uh, we're gonna just try to maybe, uh, staying with the theme of Zelda, maybe we're gonna put the master sword from Zelda into Mario's hand, if that's possible. Who knows? We'll see what it comes up with. I heard that this is a little bit harder, so uh, we will try. So we'll say uh, Mario holding Zelda Master Sword and Hand. And I'm not sure if that's enough, but we'll see. Oh, maybe we'll also add some other information. Um, let's see. Oh, let's go back to Lexica and see what, what kind of Zelda Master Sword. See if there's anyone else that was able to come up with anything here. And we have some interesting stuff here. Um, so maybe we can steal some of it. Okay, let's, let's grab some of this other stuff, copy the prompt, and see if we can add it to the end here. Fantasy Great Sword glowing with blue magical power. Just uh, We don't want it in a case. Uh, we'll leave, uh, it's inspired by this, this artist, right? So maybe that'll help. And then we're going off of Mario's image. Okay, and we're leaving everything else pretty much the same under default. You guys can make adjustments if you'd like, but we're gonna try that to see how that, that comes out. Remember, all these images are being saved in your Google Drives too. So we'll look at that after we're done. And then when we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and hit run cell again. And we did get an error. So let's see, string objective has no attribute save. Okay, so if we go to the top, what did we do wrong here? End painting. Oh, so we made a mistake, right? So this image actually needs to go under our end paint setup. So we put the image in the end paint setup and then here's the prompt which goes in end painting. Okay, so we made a mistake there. Let's rerun it, see how it goes. Okay, so you see it pulls up Mario's image. Now at once you says, okay, you have a 50 pixel um, eraser essentially. So we're gonna erase this hand, part of the hand to, to allow for the sword to go in the hand, right? Maybe the sword's gonna come like across the front. Uh, maybe this is a horrible idea. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it'll be hard for them to, for artificial intelligence to put Mario's face back together. 
um, but let's just see what happens. So we're gonna click save. And so from here, maybe that will put the sword in the hand. All right, so let's see what it came up with with the Mario in painting, remember? So we had Mario, we erased part of his hand, and okay, this one is not very great. I think that's attempting to be a sword, and it put Mario's face back together a little bit, a little bit strange on that one. Uh, not quite what we're looking for. So next one here, uh, it, it tries it again, right? Oh, this one actually came out pretty interesting. So uh, in its right hand, it has like some some sort of like star looking thing. And then on the left hand, it actually put the, the sword. So very interesting. That was their take on it. Pretty, pretty unique. And also it put Mario's face back together. You know how we erased it. It did a pretty good job of putting most of it back together. Still looks a little bit painty, kind of not very realistic, but, but pretty interesting. And then lastly, yeah, also not quite what we were looking for, um, but yeah. It was a nice try. <laughs> so I think the technology has, uh, has room for improvement for, for stable diffusion as far as in painting is concerned. I know some of the other artificial intelligence like Dolly 2 does really well with in painting and out painting and things like that, uh, but it costs money. So there's a lot of AI available that uh, you should check out if you can. And let me show you where you can find these images that it's saving. So if you go to Google Drive, click on your Google Drive. So it should create a new folder for you in your My Drive called All Pics. And from here, this is where it saves all those images that it created for you. So uh, it also, it's cool because it, in the text, it tells you what prompt you use to uh, generate those photos. And it also has a seed number on there as well. So the seed should be listed in the photo. Now, if you look into it further, the seed is, uh, every time you generate a new image, it will use a new seed. But if you want to go back to a specific instance of that AI you're using, you would wanna use the same seed if you wanted a, the same output. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel, and please comment down below which prompts gave you the best images possible. Take care and I'll see you next time.